The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Catherine, good morning. Well, I think I have to introduce again myself. I'm Father Eliseo Napier of the Mission Society of the Philippines. And I am presently the pastor of St. James de Les Church in Paris, just nearby, 25 minutes. Now, beloved friends, I am here to remind us all that we have the responsibility to share that fine pearl in us to the world. It is obvious that you have in you that fine pearl. That fine pearl was given to your forefathers many, many years ago and handed down to generation to generation until you have it now. That fine pearl is your fate. If you have that, beloved friends, then we are living in the kingdom of God at the present time. And yet, we wait for its fulfillment in God's time. That fine pearl, the fate, is a gift from God to us. And that gift needs to be shared to the world. And who will bring that? Who will bring that fine pearl in us in order to share that to the places where Jesus is not known yet? Obviously, the missionaries for the mission agentes. Agentes, missionaries to the world. I was in the mission for 15 years in Taiwan before I came over here. People ask, is it difficult to be a missionary? Yes and no. Maybe physically, yes, you have to learn the language, you have to live with the people different from your own culture. And yet, no, it is not difficult because we have been encouraged by our faith. Encouraged by the faith of the people back home. You are our powerhouse to give us encouragement to share that fine pearl of great prize to those people out there. Your continued support, spiritual support, your prayers and sacrifices, your moral support, your encouragement and prayerful wishes and your material offerings for the missions to thrive in the mission land. We have been backed down with so much scandals and some are discouraged. They don't go to church anymore because they are discouraged. But remember that there are hundreds and thousands of missionaries out there. Missionaries that have been killed. Missionaries who suffer from different kinds of illnesses. Missionaries that have been maligned. Missionaries that have been ignored. But yet, they go on. They continue to preach that gospel of love. Just recently in our um, 
responsorial psalm. Lord, I love your commands. And the commandments of God, the commands of God is to go to preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Remember, beloved friends, that there are twofold missions. First is the mission ad extra or mission ad gentes. The missionaries chosen to go and the mission ad intra is our mission within. When Jesus Christ told his disciples, go to the lost ship in the house of Israel. And as our mission, we are told to go to bring the lost ship back to the fold. That is mission ad intra. Because by virtue of our own baptism, we are all missionaries. Because we belong to a missionary church. According to Lumen Gentium, one of the 16 documents of the Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, says, The church, by her very nature, is missionaries. Her mission comes born from the mission of the Son of God and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we are also being sent to tell the world of His love, to bring that fine pearl of great price to the world. Now, beloved friends, this is a challenge for all of us. When I was in Taiwan, I lived surrounded by the Buddhist and the Taoist people. I said Mass every day with three persons. In Chinese, and during Sundays, I have only 10 parishioners to come to attend the Mass. It came into my mind, What's the use of going to the mission? With two or three person, or sometimes one, attending my mass every day, and ten during Sundays? But that's not the point. The point is, we are sent to be with these people to help them discover that fine pearl of great price in their land. So, what I did is to go around, moving around, and one time there was an old lady living in a house alone, and I saw the place, Tapsy Turby, and the old lady is sickly, so I called the OFWs, the Filipino migrant workers there, who are nurses and uh, caregivers, I organized them, and together we go around, and we went to that house. We took care of that old lady. We bathed her. We cleaned her house, and I visited her regularly until the time that she asked, Who are you? Why are you doing this? Why you care so much? My children never care. And I told her, I am a Christian, and I believe in love. Then she said, tell me about your faith. I told her, and later on, she found that fine pearl of great price. Before she died, she was baptized. Beloved friends, why are you doing this? It is because of love. It is because we Missionaries are inspired by this fine pearl that keeps on shining brightly to the world because that is what God wanted to let the people discover it, our faith. Now, beloved friends, for 458 years ago, my country, the Philippines, became Christians. It is because missionaries from Europe and missionaries from Mexico went to my place and helped the local people discover that fine pearl. We discovered it. And Philippines has become the only predominantly Christian nation in Asia. And we are thankful to the missionaries who brought that to us. We are thankful because, you know, it is a sharing 
of the gift of faith that we have. We cannot go, all of us, to the missions. There are people chosen for that purpose. Your mission is to support those people who go there. That's why my purpose that I am here is very obvious. To encourage you to continue to be the powerhouse of mission. Spiritual powerhouse. And also to encourage you of your responsibility. God has been so generous to us. And this generosity must be shared. We allow ourselves to be the instrument of God's generosity. God's generosity will flow through us, through you. God blessed you with stable life. God blessed you with wealth. Now, it's God's will for you to open yourself for the work of mission, to share just a little of God's given treasure for the mission of Jesus to thrive in the mission land. We missionaries, we don't have salaries, unlike those priests in the first world country. We depend on the support of the people at home, the people like you. What we get after our tour of duty in the mission, our missionaries come home without money but illness. Malaria, when they go home, done their tour of duty. you just um, surprised when the malaria attacks them. The whole house will... What happened? I got the malaria. Do you regret that you went to the mission? They will say, no. We offer our life for the mission. Passionately, the missionaries offer their lives to the mission. Passionate. Where that passion coming from? It is coming from the passion of Christ. The self-sacrificing love for the beloved. Our missionaries offer it passionately to the people who wants to listen. You have that passionate love for your family, for your husband and for your wife, for your children. That you are willing to offer your life for your wife, for your husband, or for your kids. That is also our missionaries. They are willing to offer their life because of that passionate love. That passion born from the passion of Jesus on the cross. Beloved friends, God loves you so much. And because of that love, we respond with love. And that love is to follow the command to go to the world and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God loves you and thank you.